The stillness of winter is an illusion. Hidden away in the overcast sky, ice accumulates on microscopic dust. Beneath crystalline icicles, water begins to pool. Invisible to the human eye, air churns all around us. And then, all at once, a blizzard, a raging river, and a frigid tempest. Though sometimes obscured behind a facade of stillness and silence, nature is constantly in a state of flux. Today, we hike through the winter to experience what it means to be human in an ever-changing world. We left Ohio on a cold morning in February, in search of snow. We headed to the hills of West Virginia, but as we drove through the mountain towns, all we found was falling rain, which was disconcerting to say the least. But then, as we climbed higher into the hills, the rain transformed into snow right before our eyes. We had found winter. Thick, wet snow fell from the sky as we prepared our backpacks at the Swallow Rock Trailhead. Below us, the Cheat River flowed rapidly, but that didn't stop some dedicated fishermen from enjoying the outdoors. And it wouldn't stop us either. We made our way to the trailhead. We'd be hiking in the Seneca Creek backcountry, taking the Swallow Rock Trail southeast, camping a night, and then hiking along the Allegheny Mountain Trail. After diverting onto the Bear Hunter Trail, we'd camp for another night before hiking our way back on the Seneca Creek Trail. We started out on the trail. Snow pelted us from above, and the river raged below. The steep incline of the trail and precarious slope of the hill were heightened by the slick fallen snow. So immediately, as soon as we got on the trail, it was just like smokies uphill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the sort of moist snow on the ground, it's like extra precarious. The trail already is kind of sloping down towards the slope, like it's not really even. Yeah, yeah. And now it's slippery on top of that. <laughs> I feel like once we hit that ridge, it'll be easy going from there. It'll be really nice. This is incredible. Winter this is better. wonderland, yeah, dude. <laughs> better than we could have hoped for. And you pointed out the snow is like perfect packing snow. <laughs> oh, this is, if you've never experienced snow before, this is ultimate snowball snow. You yeah. just do that and... <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, the trail started to descend, making our hike a bit easier. Everything was blanketed in thick clumps of snow. From below, vibrant green club mosses and ferns added rare flashes of color to the winter landscape. The trail had leveled out, and for a brief moment, we enjoyed what felt like a nostalgic stroll through a winter paradise. But before long, we found ourselves facing treacherous trail conditions once again. It was time to pause and take a moment to assess the situation. I feel like this looks crossable, it's just going to take some time. The biggest thing is less the current and more just keeping our feet dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this isn't dangerous by any means. I really didn't expect like this sort of rough stream crossing. I mean, we were trying to choose our location based on where it was snowing, but uh, as we were driving up... Yeah, we saw like a ton of uh, rivers and things with water levels really high. Yeah, like right up next to the road, so... Well, let's go take a look down there where the crossing actually is, and then see what it looks like. 
So this actually doesn't look like the best place to cross. It's too far and also too deep. Way too deep, yeah. At the very least, we want to find something that's as narrow as possible. The most important thing, just not to get our feet wet. Yeah. So that we can actually survive the rest of the trip. <laughs> We decided to look upstream to see if there were any better spots to cross. Yeah, this looks way better. I think like right here. Like the actual log itself. The log itself might work too, yeah. As long as you're grabbing part of it like a rail and being real careful. Ultimately, we didn't feel good about crossing the river at any of these spots, but we did have an ace up our sleeve. We're gonna have someone head back to the car and get these knee-high neoprene boots that we brought. We actually have these exactly for this situation, but the rationale in not bringing them was the terrain was kind of rough and it's hard to hike in those. We didn't want to carry anything extra because we're already carrying quite a lot. Yeah, we've got two pairs of boots. So it's going to be like the ferry situation like you were talking about. Yeah. Robbie went back to retrieve our boots while Brian and I waited amid the wintry forest. Before long, Robbie had returned, hands full with the boots. I was reading the trailhead sign and it said, crossing this creek at high water levels is dangerous. So I'm thinking, we don't know how many crossings there's gonna be. Let's cross this one, see how the other ones are. If we ever decide it's too unsafe, we'll just camp wherever we're at or however far we can get and then go back tomorrow. Yeah, that's because I don't think it's gonna get any lower. Not wanting to give up just yet, we slipped on our boots and got ready to test the waters. The current's pretty rough, but it's doable. Insulated and waterproof, these boots were perfect for crossing the stream. Now, if only we had had three pairs. After crossing the stream, we decided to just leave the neoprene boots on and tied our regular hiking boots to our packs. What do you guys think after crossing? I actually didn't think it was that bad. Those boots worked phenomenally well. I didn't think the stream itself was that bad as long as you have a walking stick. It's just the inconvenience of having, yeah, having to take off the boots and then go back and forth. Creating that, that much inconvenience is almost not worth it considering the risk of yeah. having to cross so many times. I will say it, it wasn't as inconvenient as I thought it would be though. Like your yeah. feet kind of just slip right into the boots. <laughs> yeah, they go yeah. on really yeah. fast. Like, sure. I think we should keep going, see how many more crossings there are. Yeah. If it's looking like there's gonna be a ton, we shouldn't keep going. I think if there's like one or two crossings, we're fine. Yeah. If there's more than that, maybe reconsider. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's go. We hiked on, but the winter weather created some smaller problems as well. So one slight problem we're having right now is that the snow is covering all the trail, so we're not entirely sure if this is actually the trail or if we missed the blaze. It looks kind of like it, but it is hard to tell. We eventually found our way, hiking through soggy sections soaked by the stream. us thick snow stuck to every branch and bush. Everything was cold and wet, but it was stunningly beautiful. The snow has picked up considerably since we got here. Yeah. Like it's accumulated a lot and it's getting dark already. The snow made brighter the last bits of daylight as dusk set in. The sounds of the river and the falling snow provided a soothing backdrop as we stopped and took shelter under the boughs of an evergreen tree. So we got a couple things working in our favor. We haven't had any more stream crossings, and two, the snow has stopped snowing yeah. so hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still, there's a general like dampness to everything though, and I'm actually wondering right now at how much we're gonna be able to get dry tonight. It looks like the snow's accumulated, what, like a inch and a half, two inches maybe? 
I do think that we need to make sure we're starting to make progress. The terrain's been pretty flat, but it hasn't been very open. So even though it's not like a lot of hills, it's still kind of hard to camp. It's also a thing we always need to think about is pacing ourselves so we don't um, like start sweating or tire ourselves out. Mm -hmm. After some energizing snacks, we emerged from beneath the tree and kept at it. Twilight cast everything in a dark blue hue, putting us in the mindset of settling down for the night. But the terrain around us was thick, brushy, and uneven. So far, still not looking like there's any good campsites around here. We'll have to get further in before it flattens out. And now, the trail was becoming more uneven, and we found ourselves butting up against the rushing water once again. Another stream crossing? Crossing the stream itself wasn't so bad, but we again had to switch our boots around. But knowing how to tie your laces together can make it easier to stow your boots neatly on your pack. A good way to tie these laces together is just to do a simple square knot from one lace to the other. So we've got one square knot here, and you do another with the other lace. And then the knots will like sort of pull on each other. Now we were in the dark of night. I started searching for any remotely clear camping areas off of the trail. It's too thick up there. Too thick? Too many trees. Yeah. Alas, there was nothing to be found. And on top of that, the trail transitioned into a steep incline. All around us were sloping hillsides, and the trail was the only narrow corridor through a thicket of snowy shrubs and saplings. And in some parts, the trail was obstructed by fallen branches. On top of all that, the snow started picking up again, this time falling even harder than it had earlier in the day. We were getting exhausted, and the trail seemed to climb up endlessly. So uh, I just checked the compass out of paranoia. We're going south, so I think that means we're in like the last third of the trail before we hit a junction. And I'm hoping that around there we'll find a campsite or so. I feel like we've been making pretty good progress since we were really low down next to the creek. But part of me is wondering if we should have stayed and camped in that one open area before the trail started going uphill. The problem with the Appalachians is like, look at the landscape, you know, there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you wanted to stop early, you'd really have to struggle to find a decent clearing. The good news is that right now it's only 6.50, so we've got hours and hours of nighttime that we can still hike. How are you feeling so far? Oh, I'm feeling good, like especially compared to last trip, it's kind of warm. It's a lot of snow and it's kind of wet, but super comfortable. You know, the one nice thing about snow, at least with all the white snow, it's easier to reflect the light, so it's a little bit brighter at night. And it kind of just looks nice. <laughs> yeah. Determined to find a great campsite, we continued up the steep trail, feeling reassured anytime we saw a blue blaze pinned to a tree. I still think we should keep going, but if we need a contingency plan, it looks like this is a decent area. And yeah, not ideal because it's right next to the water. Yeah, I still definitely would like to keep seeing if there's something up ahead. But. Yeah. We were close to compromising and setting up camp wherever we could, but we kept on. Surely, we thought, a great site was just around the corner. But we seem to just come across more stream crossings. In the snow, we spotted the delicate tracks of a songbird. But our own feet felt heavy as we trudged up the trail. This is the first time in a long time we've had uphill like this. This is like Japan. Oh yeah, plus snow. Okay, I think we have to be close though. I just cannot believe we haven't even hit the first junction. There's one junction, and then when you hit the next junction, you've hiked 3.3 miles. And we've been making a lot of progress, it feels like, and I still... These uphills are... Ugh. 
Hiking trails, especially ones going uphill, always seem to dilate the amount of distance marked on a map. Although it seemed we were at least having an easier time than some of the forest dwellers. That's the third spider we've seen just inching his way across this barren snowscape. It's really bizarre. I've never seen anything like that. Gives me a little perspective on my life. <laughs> as nice as these boots are, they also weigh your feet down a lot. Yeah. Make the uphill that much harder. And just as we thought we were about to reach our limit. I see the junction. And I think we got a campsite. Yep. Nice looking campsite. Our patience paid off. It looks great. Oh yeah. Oh, got some seats and everything. Woo! There's a table. Oh. These are. These are the moments we live for. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Brian, you're me. You're close. It's rough, man. It's you're going uphill. You're breaking out of sweat. We've got to be careful about what clothes we put on tonight, you know. <laughs> I just kept looking up. I kept seeing more uphill, and then I would take two steps and trip on a rock and lose a little bit of morale. But this looks well worth it. Very well worth it. Cool. Sometimes it's like things pay off so It was well. such a tremendous relief to find this campsite after such an arduous hike. Amazingly, the sign said we had only hiked two miles. Maybe it was all that extra gear we had carried for dinner, but it felt like a lot more distance than that. And now it was time to unload some of that gear and settle into our campsite. And Andrew and I had an experimental addition to our tent for the cold, a mylar blanket that we altered to fit into our tent. So what we're hoping is that once we put the rain fly on, the space blanket will trap a little bit extra body heat over the course of the night and keep us a little warmer. Now we didn't fold it all the way because we wanted a tiny bit of ventilation because we didn't want too much condensation build up and uh, we wanted to make sure the door was accessible. It's kind of amazing, you like, you stick your hand in there and as long as there's no wind coming through, it actually warms up pretty quickly for how thin of a material this is. Hopefully, this would keep us at least a little bit warmer at night. We continued setting up in the snow excited at the prospect of sleeping in our warm sleeping bags beneath the snowy, silent forest. But before settling in, we prepped the dining area for an extravagant dinner. Hopefully, the bulky stove and food we carried in would be worth it. Today, we're having a special, special treat. That is hot pot. The reason we're eating hot pot is because it is the Lunar New Year. Even though this isn't actually like a traditional meal they eat for that holiday, it's a Chinese tradition. This is, yeah, this is about as Chinese you can get. We've got a variety of ingredients. Some of it we're saving for tomorrow. We've got some mushrooms, fried tofu. Daryl Anderson gave us. He gave us some, uh, I think these are just dried tofu. You just pop into hot pot just like this. It almost looks like silken tofu, but whatever it is, I'll eat it. I've also got a bunch of dehydrated vegetables here. Oh, we've got some spicy stuff in here that we'll save for tomorrow. We don't want to... We don't want any intestinal problems on the first night. <laughs> first thing we need to do is fill this up with water and get it boiling. Oh man, this, this is exciting. <sighs> now, in case you don't know, the way Chinese hot pot works is you boil all your food in the center, either in plain water or some sort of broth. It can be like chicken broth, spicy broth. But you also have some dipping sauce. So this is some sort of Chinese barbecue sauce. It's like some sort of fishy, oily thing. Mixed with peanut butter and soy sauce. That's what my family's always used. We put that in our bowl, put some hot water on it. It's great for dipping the cooked ingredients in. And we had another snack that Daryl Anderson had sent us. It's actually like tiny whole crabs that are glazed in what looks like some sort of a sweet sauce. It's got sesame covering them too. Yeah, these look delicious. It's it had a very okay. fishy flavor. Yeah, it's got a very fishy smell. Mmm. Okay. That tastes exactly how I imagined it to. Mmm. That's really good. Wow, that is good. It's just kind of like a seafoody flavor, but with a 
aftertaste of sweetness. First bite, it tastes like a just a really sweet crack, and then you get that seafoodness to it. It's really good. It's such a weird combination of flavors that for some reason just kind of works. I'm totally sure this wouldn't appeal to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, what do you think? It's all Too right. Sweet? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I keep eating in the hopes that my body will generate heat from all the food. <laughs> oh, look, a claw. Great thing about hot pot is that you just throw whatever you want in the middle of the pot and it doesn't matter that you're mixing all the ingredients together. And it's also just like such a communal style of eating, you know? Everyone's sitting around sharing food and it's a good time. Look at all those colors too, it's like... Maybe some vegetables, I think leafy greens are always essential. So these vegetables I dehydrated, and with this weather you really don't need to, but I just wanted to experiment to see how you would do it if you were worried about your vegetables perishing. And the other advantage of dehydrating these is uh, they become lighter. And the two vegetables we have are Napa cabbage and something called Tong Ho, which is also a chrysanthemum leaf. Very delicious. Yeah, it's got such a unique flavor, but I love it. Oh man, I, I'm not even eating it and I can feel life returning to my body. <laughs> But here we've also got some mushrooms. We've got shiitakes, a traditional one in Asian cuisine. We've also got what's called golden needle mushroom. But this is actually a mushroom that grows wild around here, actually during this season, during the winter. It looks completely different when it's grown in the wild. It's like orange big and kind of like a typical mushroom shape. It's not super warm yet. Actually, part of it is the sauce. It needs to be heated up. <laughs> Those are good because they absorb all the hot water inside them. And you bite it and it explodes. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a little undercooked, but it's actually quite juicy. Mm. It's like a lukewarm pot. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a chrysanthemum? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Texture might be a bit off because it's dehydrated in the... So it's got an interesting taste, like a weird herbal, you know. Mm -hmm. These Daryl Anderson tofus are pretty good. Oh, really? Yeah. So these are cooked enough? Or even if they're not very good enough, as they <laughs> more or less. Um, <laughs> hot pot is a game of patience. And when you're cold and hungry, patience is thin. <laughs> like the hardest game. <laughs> yeah. Eat up, fellas. <laughs> None of this hot pot goes to waste. Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year. The hot pot had been incredibly satisfying, and we topped it off by drinking some much-needed hot water. Oh my god. <laughs> it's kind of like a metaphor for life. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta warm yourself up from the inside. Oh yeah. If you want to be a happier person, you gotta work your way from the inside. <laughs> that is so good. Sweet Jebediah Moses. <laughs> Not bad so far. As usual, like, the legs need to warm up first. I hope this Mylar gets like a game changer or something. <laughs> Earlier hiking up all that uphill made me sweat a bunch. So like some of our clothes got wet. I, I know some of yours did, but mine seemed to get really wet. So it's pretty cold while we were eating. But now that I'm in dry clothes, it's a lot better. Feeling much better about the situation. I'm hoping this like convection oven thing <laughs> gets going and like it dries our clothes a bit, but yeah. This is like what I've been looking forward to all day. That hike was tough. Good night. The sun emerged the next day, and even though its light hadn't yet thawed the frigid air, it was a welcome sight. I was the first to wake up, 
and decided to have a bit of a heavier breakfast. Not the most standard breakfast. This sounds so good right now. <laughs> Instant noodles should not taste this good. Sheets of ice, thawed in the morning sun, began to shed from our tent, just as Brian and I woke up. So warm in that tent that the only thing that drove me to come out was a great need to use the bathroom. And if you've seen us before, you know that I like to use snow as toilet paper. And this is some very good packing snow, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, not looking Yeah, I'm about to say it. <laughs> Beneath the bright sun, everything looked like a cheerful, wintry landscape. And the clear skies motivated us to get packed and experience our surroundings from the trail. The trail brought us down a long corridor, leading through an array of trees caked in snow and ice. We could see for miles through the trees in the bright light, and we could feel ourselves warming up as we hiked. It's much warmer today because of the sun, which is such a welcome change in the weather. And uh, it's almost so warm that I might have to take out this outer layer. Last night we were hiking uphill and I started sweating and that really chilled me at night. Thankfully I've got some dry clothes, but I think I'm gonna try and manage my layers a lot more carefully now that the sun's out. We were thankful for the newfound warmth, but it also meant we were even more likely to work up a sweat. We had changed back into our damp clothes from the previous night so that our dry sets could stay dry for tonight. The trail kept taking us straight ahead, and all around us the scenery was stunning. Delicate branches were enveloped in a layer of snow, and everything sparkled as we made our way forward. We came to a split in the trail, and took a moment to enjoy the scenery before continuing on. We saw the shadows stretching across the ground as the sun was starting to set. We passed the winter equinox yet? Yeah. Okay, so hopefully the days are getting longer because we got up so late today that we're already running out of sunlight. So hopefully we find that camp soon. <laughs> Before long, we reached an open field whose clumps of grass created a lumpy texture in the snow. And just past that was a trail junction. We stopped to rest and refuel. So we haven't really talked about it yet, but how is everyone's nights? Oh, pretty good. Oh, you're super warm. I'm just amazed at how much it's warmed up since yesterday. Yeah, we definitely had a fortunate warm night. <laughs> I can't believe how windy it was last night. So did your huge bursts of wind. Did your tent get knocked over? No, just <laughs> the wind would like push it to the side. After the first gust of wind, I just saw this light just going all over the place outside. I was like, <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> was it me? 
Mm-hmm. That was you, yeah. <laughs> that was like, did someone like see our campsite and thought we were like all dead and came to ins- investigate or something? Uh-huh. It's really hard to get out of bed in the morning. So when hard. It's so cold. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't even that cold. Just you're so warm inside. Mm-hmm. When you're hiking, especially in the cold of winter, every campsite, trail junction, nook, and cranny becomes a temporary home. With the changing of seasons from autumn to winter, the change of temperatures from day to night, and the change of scenery as you hike along. You create a consistency in the company you keep and the community you create. We continued on and the trail took us down the side of the hill and into the woods. And Robbie noticed some signs of life in the snow. I think right here is where a deer slept last night. I am by no means a hunter, but I think you can tell because it's Got the snow right there. And then over here, you've actually got tracks moving away from it. And there's one here, and there was one up there. I think they just plopped down. Remember that one time we filmed that video yeah. in the snow? Yeah. There was those little patches where the deers had slept, and there was poop lying around too, so. I'm looking for some hair, but I'm not seeing any, but sometimes you'll find hairs, and deer hair is really brittle. So if you're trying to wonder whether or not it's a deer hair, you just pick it up, and you can really literally just pull it apart snap it in half. So funny how much more robust animals are. Like a deer just plops down and sleeps in the snow. If we did that, it would be dead by morning. (laughs) After observing the trails left by the deer, it was time for us to continue on our own trail. We descended further down the hill, entering the embrace of the forest around us. Snow was thawing beneath our feet, and icicles dangled from fallen logs. We approached a shallow, flowing stream, where lush green moss peeked out from beneath the snow. Here, we stopped to fill up on water before hiking on through the familiar Appalachian landscape. This feels like the last day in the Smokies. What are these called right here? So these are the, those are rhododendrons. Yeah, you see those everywhere in the Appalachians. They're actually not native, but they've become naturalized to the environment. So they're not necessarily oh, invasive okay. because they don't harm the environment necessarily. But Where did they come from? I'm not sure exactly, but I'm imagining the continent of Eurasia. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, Pangea, so, I'm sure. <laughs> actually, going along with that, there's also the, the evergreen uh, hemlock trees, and that's like giving this place such a Christmas feel, you know? Oh, yeah. It would have been great to have like Christmas dinner out here. Yeah. We had New Year dinner. (laughs) We're gonna have it again tonight. We continued hiking parallel to the brook as though its soothing sounds were leading us to our evening's destination. The trail turned the corner and soon revealed a wonderful sight. I feel like a regular pioneer. <laughs> I saw Brian diverging from the trail and I was like, what is this? What's going on? <laughs> oh baby. This is a beautiful campsite. It's overlooking the Seneca Creek over here. It's oh my like- goodness. Whoa, look at that! 
Look at that waterfall. Oh, whoa. <laughs> wow, we got a table again, too. Wow. Chairs with backrests and everything. Oh, this is great, dude. Yeah. This is beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh, yeah. And what is it about when you're hiking and you just come across that perfect campsite that's <laughs> like the best feeling in the world? So good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always surprised that every time we go hiking, you never know what's going to be around like the next corner. Yeah. Like it just, you would have never expected that this yeah. would be out here. That whole exactly. trail, it was just very typical Appalachian sort of mountain hiking and suddenly yeah. it opens up and you've got like some grassy meadows over there, yeah, a yeah. waterfall over there, big mountains in the distance. It's like, yeah. I finally realized this looks like something from Captain Mark. It was like a PBS show where this guy would draw on like this big poster board and he'd make like these lavish landscapes that literally look just like this. Too. I mean, this yeah. this is a very surreal landscape. It looks like someone took a bunch of like key different landmarks yeah, yeah. and smushed them together. <laughs> if this was summer, I could just see like little tents popped up everywhere. Oh yeah. Maybe yeah, like yeah. a little like just little city here. with lights. <laughs> and, yeah. It's like the end of Return of the Jedi with the Ewok yeah. village. Like there should be like little lights everywhere and people dancing around and stuff. Man, this is great. This is like a cliffside or piece of real estate. Oh, man. <laughs> just overlooking everything, man. In the distance, we saw an open meadow just beyond a trail junction and decided to wander over and scout it out. This area up here looks so cool how open it is. I feel like I need to like get a knight armor and ride a horse or something. Tomorrow we're gonna have to take a polar dip in this little area if it's sunny enough. <laughs> I wonder how someone even got across there without like boots like ours. Um. Like the fact that someone saw that was like, that looks like a good place to make a campsite. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that looks like a fire ring over there. there could be that so this is where we're going to go tomorrow, right? Yeah. It's yeah, this uh, looks awesome. It's going to be a bit of uphill, obviously, but that's fine. We'll have plenty of time. This is very dolly size right here. Yeah. <laughs> kind of wonder, was this naturally open like this or what? Lots like of good campsites. One over there, one over there. Yeah. It just just like Campsite City. Boxes. I know that Dolly saw it. certain parts of it are naturally boggy, but other parts are actually kind of deforested. But this kind of looks natural to me, just because it's such a small area. Well, I'm almost wondering, should we camp at that, go check that campsite out, because that looks super nice. It's not like we'd be staying there tomorrow, yeah. This feels like Stonehenge or something. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. I think that's what I appreciate most in a hiking landscape is when you get big open meadows like this. Yeah. I don't know, I think this is great. What do you guys think? This is pretty nice. You know, it's, it's a very rare occasion when there's more than one great campsite to choose from. Look <laughs> <laughs> at these so. chairs, man. That one's like literally contoured for a, the bottom. <laughs> wow, well, I mean, it just has no table, but I think we'll make do. Yeah, we could use one of those as a table. Yeah. Wow, it's yeah. It's pretty dry. I mean, this for our tents right here just seems too perfect. Let's do it. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. yeah. Because we're not going to have another opportunity because we're going to be hiking out tomorrow. So. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. We retrieved our packs to move from a great campsite to an even better one. And along the way, I saw a familiar plant. All right, well, while we're making our way back to the other camp, this plant is burdock. You can tell because it's got these huge spiky things. We'll will stick right to you. This is a second year burdock. The first year of growth, it's just got sort of a rosette of leaves that are close to the ground. But it's got a root that is edible. Once it has the stalk though, you don't want to eat the root. But earlier in the spring, you can eat certain parts of the stalk that are tender. It also has huge leaves. I've seen people wrap food in it to cook it, but the leaves are real bitter, so I don't really like doing that myself. And I think this is kind of an indication that we're about to get into the meadowy area, because this isn't something you'd see in the woods like that. So obviously the plants Ecosystems are kind of encroaching on each other. These birds, with their hook-shaped prickles, served as the inspiration for Swedish engineer George de Mestril, who invented Velcro. Before doing anything, 
we decided to relax a bit in our campsite's wonderful chairs. Eventually, we got up and set up our tents, this time in weather that allowed for a more laid-back pace. Then, it was time to arrange our dining room and set it up for tonight's hot pot dinner. While we waited for the water to brew, I looked around and found a friendly fungus. So while I was inspecting the creek, I saw this chaga fungus growing out of this birch tree. Kind of just looks like a burnt chunk of nothingness, but it's definitely chaga and I might take a little bit of it and uh, brew some tea tonight after dinner. And then it was time to eat. Okay, so I've got some of the spicy stuff. Do you guys want me to put it in or do you want to do individual? Uh, I'd say we put some in, but maybe not all of it. Okay. Yeah, let's put some in. This sure. is good. Sure. Sometimes when you have hot pot, you've got a pot with a divider oh, in the middle. I that already. And uh, one side will be spicy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> it smells like a Chinese grocery store. <laughs> yeah, exactly like one. All right, I'm going to start with some of these uh, dehydrated mushrooms we got, just so um, we can give some time to soak up. Throw some of these yams in there, too. Since this is our last day out here, we can not worry about have to, having enough ingredients for another day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man, it's boiling good today. Oh, yeah. Look at this. This is a true hot pot. So we've also got some carrots. Got an orange one and a purple one. <laughs> oh, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> so we saved the spicy broth for this last night because you don't want that to deal with on the trail. <laughs> I want to get in on this action. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta get in on that action. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> just eating just like stirring the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the hot pot is a game of patience. Wow, it's a great evening too. It's, it's a little bit warmer than yesterday. There's, it's not yeah. wet, obviously. It's and, uh, way warmer than yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> There's like no wind. I think something has to be done. Oh, at these, this point. these fried tofu's definitely. They're great, but you have to carve a lot of really hot. <laughs> okay. That's the least of my problems right now. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Mm. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> This feels more like the hot pot at home. Yeah. Yeah. You know what we gotta do. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> These the vegetables are like so good. Oh wow, even the yams are cooked. Oh really? I think so. I'm going spoon size before. <laughs> <laughs> the carrots aren't quite done yet. Gotta get some of vegetables. Let's throw more veggies in there. No holding back now. Veggies are so good in the hot pot. <laughs> it's actually nice and really hot. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's so good. <laughs> this is, oh, what a payoff, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the shiitake mushrooms are real good because they, they just like the tofu, they absorb a lot of water. Yeah, they soak up all this juice. They, they stay really hot. Mm. We need a bigger bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat hot pot enough in life. <laughs> it's really so easy. Yeah. Put more mushrooms yeah, in. Yeah, I was about to grab those actually. Just pour them all in. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Is this the best meal we've had camping? It might be pretty darn close. It's pretty close if it's not it. Yeah. <laughs> this is about as close as you could get to like a meal you could have at home and have it taste exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> so actually, big thanks to my dad. He's the one who provided the, the stove. <laughs> yeah, we, we decided on our last trip that we didn't want to finagle with any sort of camping stove. Some of these mushrooms, the softer mushrooms are good. What I got here is, it's like um, a fish cake, and it's made of like minced fish and potato starch. And usually, one of the main ingredients for hot pot are like little fish balls or shrimp balls. Oh, yeah. I think it made it made of like squid or beef, anything. Yeah. But. <laughs> like we're like some trolls in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Come eat our mushroom soup. <laughs> Man, but when I was hiking up that hill last night, I was just like, when is this ending? Like, this is pretty horrible. <laughs> the if snow was falling. If only we could have had hot pot like this at the last night, that would have been a good conclusion. Yeah. It was still quite a relieving meal. Yeah. yeah. But I'm really happy we can have real hot pot tonight. Nature was like, hey, check out this campsite. It's all green and perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll even just uncover it for you. <laughs> I've prepared it for you. <laughs> it's moments like these where I'm like, I could live out in the woods forever. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we just set up camp here and like, every week someone would hike out and just go get more food <laughs> we just live here for like a month <laughs> we'd literally be trolls for other hikers coming by like oh welcome <laughs> yeah, like, oh welcome welcome come sit have a hot I got meal. a pot of stew <laughs> come eat it with me <laughs> it would totally be worth doing it just to do that to people we're gonna sleep with some full bellies tonight geez after we had eaten most of the ingredients, we finished it all off with some noodles. Oh, that's a lot of noodles. <laughs> so excited. I'm in hog heaven right now. This is a pre-post hike meal. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew and I decided to sit out a bit longer to watch the stars. <laughs> so last night when we were hiking up that hill, something I kept thinking was, this would feel impossible if you were alone. Like, oh yeah. Can you imagine the psychological, like, horror of that? <laughs> yeah, it's it's so funny, man, because you don't know if there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. Like, we just happen to get really lucky like that. If there had been nothing, and you were by yourself, like, just you have to rely on your own like will and gumption. And when you're with a group, like, you just even though you're all in the same boat, essentially you still got other people to like encourage each other. Yeah, it's like yeah. to, to give each other the false hope almost. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because in Morgan Monroe, that's exactly what we talked about. If oh, you yeah. think the other person's not scared, you're yeah. not gonna be scared either. Yeah, yeah. Wow, look at those stars. This has definitely been a good winter trip. Indeed. I don't know if I talked about this already, but it's so unfortunate how you can't take the contrast with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when we get back home, it's just gonna be so comfortable and we can't remember how the fact that my feet are soaking wet and cold right now. Yeah, yeah. And appreciate the fact that you are barefoot inside with carpet and everything. There's just like not enough of a direct connection to being outside in the elements. Yeah. We gotta get back to balance. It's definitely not coming back out here and just living outdoors. Right, right. But it's definitely not as much indoors as I live now, yeah. you know? This is arguably much more rustic and rough than what some sort of hunter-gathering person would yeah, live. Yeah, because they would have like a nice they, settlement. They've got everything. the whole community, you know? <laughs> They're back in town boiling hot pot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's either you're surrounded by a lot of people in the cities, but then there's no nature, or you're out in a rural area. And like, there's small towns that have community, yeah, yeah. but there's also places where you're just kind of like dispersed. Yeah, yeah. There's no balance like, I would argue, what humans were meant to live in. <laughs> When your physical surroundings create an ever-present contrast between pain and pleasure or discomfort and relaxation, you remember the value of a community that you can depend upon and rely on. So we are in our tent again and there's significantly less clothes hanging on these clotheslines that Brian has set up. But uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot warmer tonight. Yeah. I was thinking this feels a lot like the second night on Kumatori. Besides the fact that it's cold, we've got the constant sound of like rushing water in the distance. It does feel a lot like that. Yeah. Much less strenuous hiking, thankfully, but... <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna start hanging up all my wet stuff, my socks. I think it's gonna be a nice night, though. Like strange butterflies emerging from green cocoons, Andrew and I squirmed our way out of our sleeping bags.
It wasn't freezing this morning, but it was still fairly chilly, so I decided to brew a hot drink. For once, Brian and I are the first ones up, and I'm actually boiling water in the morning. And the other day I collected some chaga, and it kind of just looks like a bunch of burnt pieces of mulch, but uh, it is a fungus, I assure you. You can make a medicinal tea out of it, so I'm gonna try today to make a tea and uh, see how that is. It's probably got some dirt on it too. But... Oh wow, it's changing colors real quick though. As soon as I put that in, it just changed colors immediately. It's almost like a dark... I guess it kind of looks like coffee. I know it's chaga for sure, it's just... It still looks like a crusty old piece of burnt wood, so I'm a little nervous. But... It doesn't really taste like much. <clears throat> kind of a vague, herby flavor, maybe. Let's see if I can put some more in. It's not bad, I'm gonna try and boil it some more and see if anything happens with that, the flavor. It does have like a faint herbal, fruity sort of scent, or maybe I'm just imagining that. Whoa, it was actually like slightly bitter on that first sip, kind of like coffee. You wanna try? <laughs> I do wanna smell it. I don't really smell much, but... I think it's a smell, maybe just hot water smell. I feel like I've heard people refer to drinking chaga tea as like coffee, but maybe I'm thinking of something else. But it definitely looks and kind of tastes like coffee. Is it actually coffee? <laughs> it's like kind of bitter. Taste that bitterness though? It's kind of subtle sometimes, but... Oh, maybe, yeah, the bitter aftertaste. Yeah, yeah. While it's going down. Okay. It's pretty good. It's supposed to be medicinal. So, uh... We'll either be feeling real good today or we'll be even more sick. <laughs> we went about our morning milling around camp. We tended to our wounds and made sure our teeth were clean with some organic toothpaste. It was a quiet, calm morning. We eventually broke camp and explored the area nearby. The cascade in the river was a wonderful sight this morning, and it felt like a privilege to have so much beautiful nature right in our backyard. because nature just makes stuff like this completely on its own. But to us humans, it's almost like it was made for us. It's like so beautiful and so amazing that you think somebody designed it. Like a human actually came out here and like landscaped that. But it's just nature doing its thing. It's a really weird thing. The wonders of nature never get old, even in more familiar, subdued landscapes there are countless treasures to be found. And with nature always in a state of flux, there are always new wonders to experience. We continue down the path, excited to see what new wonders nature had in store for us today. We saw water cascading down a steep bank, feeding into the stream. In that 
that stream, white water bounced along the rocks submerged beneath. Arching across it was a tree whose top had become embedded in the ground. These curiosities of the wilderness both create and are shaped by the constant change in nature. Snow melts into rushing water, which in turn shapes the rock that causes the water to rush. And amid all that change, life takes shape. So there's a branch that fell onto this conifer tree. You can see these little dangly things here. These are actually not cones. These are the cocoon of a bagworm. They basically use the material from the tree to create a cocoon for themselves, and they'll emerge as like a moth. But uh, we used to see these all over our yard, growing off of the, the cedar bushes. I haven't seen them in the wild too often, but... Though just yesterday everything was covered in snow, today there was water everywhere. Droplets clung to the boughs of spruce trees, and the stream continued flowing, and the soil beneath our feet was damp and muddy. And with moisture, there is fungus. There's some sort of mushroom growing on here. Not quite sure what it is. It's all old and chewed up, but check this out. There's some green elf cup mycelium in this wood, just staining it. It's such a colorful. Are we 100% sure that's not smushed bread? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a mushroom. Uh, is it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, whatever it is, the color in here is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> we had finally reached a trail junction, and we noticed something peculiar about our map. This is our turn. So this is the trail that we're gonna take. But on the sign it says Swallow Rock Trail. But I took a look at the map and it actually says Shallow Rock Trailhead on the map. So whichever one is right, one of those needs to be fixed <laughs> because someone's gonna get lost someday because of that. Here there was one more stream crossing, but by now we were used to it. And we traded off our boots like a well-oiled machine. On the other side, the trail began sloping up along densely wooded hills. So I'm looking at my compass and to the right is north, to the left is south, and you'll notice that all the slopes that are facing towards the north, they're still covered in snow, whereas all of these ones are covered in sunshine, most of the snow has thawed, and it's amazing how just these hills right next to each other, like within feet of each other, can have such different changes in the environment. And even in the spring when mushrooms start sprouting up, you're more likely to find them growing on the sunnier hills because it's warmer. And it also affects like which way the moss grows and all that, it's pretty amazing. After the last two snowy days, it was a nice change of pace to be on the sunny, south-facing slope. And the uphills were a lot less treacherous now that things had melted. Though a few tenacious patches of snow persisted in the shadier spots of the trail. Just when we started thinking the trail seemed to be winding on a bit longer than it should, 
Robbie saw a clearing. I think we're just about there. Hoping oh, I anyway. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I think this is it. All at once, the trail emerged from the forest into a big open field. It was difficult to recognize at first without the snow, but we soon realized we were back at our first night's campsite. Lying in the meadow were desiccated milkweed pods, and sure enough, old milkweed stalks stood among the dried grass. We decided to stop and reminisce a bit at our old campsite. We spent one night here, and already this place is nostalgic to me. Yeah. <laughs> There's like the slightest bit of familiarity and I'm just like, yeah, this is my home, this is my place. <laughs> it is funny how familiar and also how different it looks at the same time. Yeah. Like yeah, that whole that. open area that we walked through, like I totally forgot that existed. Yeah. When Robbie got there, I was like, oh, I think we're there. I was like, this isn't the campsite. How do you know this we're there? <laughs> Everything was just covered in snow. Yeah. It's amazing like how quickly it can change over the course of two days. If we had an extra night, I'd be like, let's just stay here tonight. <laughs> that would be pretty fun. Yeah. Just two days ago, we were struggling up a blustery, snowy hill. And today we were struggling up a, a damp, sweaty hill. <laughs> <laughs> this trip um, was a lot like Dolly Sods and Sunset. Snow the first day and walking through snow the next day. And then like no snow and yeah. sun the next the last day. I love these type of areas that have lots of variety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite feelings is coming like out of a forest and seeing something entirely new. Yeah. Such a change in landscape. That's what I really liked about North Manitou. Mm -hmm. It was like you would be walking through this beautiful forest, but then every so often you just have this big open field and it was really nice. It's like this entire trip, there's a change in the seasons and a change in the scenery way quicker than you would have ever expected. <laughs> well, I'm ready for spring. <laughs> we enjoyed the sunny, warm weather for a little while longer before hiking the last stretch of the trail. In just the course of a few nights, it felt like entire seasons had passed. Nature is always in a state of continual change. Sometimes it's small, almost imperceivable changes like flakes of snow drifting from the sky. Sometimes it's a chaotic shift, an avalanche tumbling down a mountainside. Today we face more changes than ever. With developing cities, technological innovations, an uncertain economy, society fluctuates just as the natural world does. We can't stop change from happening, the clashing of forces and the contradictions that emerge are part of both nature and society. But what has always gotten us through a world in flux was our sense of community. The same sensibility that brings families together over a boiling pot of food is that which drives us towards a world of cooperation, compassion, and togetherness. Change in itself is neither good nor bad. But when we embrace that change together, as a community, that's when we can truly thrive.
Shout outs to Stephen, Tuck, and Coop. William Heiss County Park, we'll see you soon. Extra special thanks to Jeremy Pruitt, Jacob Milliken, and Sunjan Huang. We couldn't do it without you guys. And Team Bryce Ryan would like to say, as always, remember to keep sharing and caring. Also, a shout out to Expedition Research, who sent us some awesome gear. Can't wait to use it on the trail. And also, shout out to Jason Bourgeois and John Truitt. Also, thank you to Sue and Tom Kozlowski and Jess Akers for your support. Extra special thanks to Dennis Yeo, who would like to give a shout out to his friends at BSF in Singapore. You're all awesome. And extra special thanks to Haley R. Kalis, who would like to give a shout out to Christopher Robert Abbey, AKA Krabby. Also, Ann McBride would like to give a shout out to Tom Pavich. Ed Recinto would like to give a shout out to his daughter, Sophia Liv. Then we've also got shout outs to longtime patrons, Greg Cribb, Hong Wong, and Jim Potts. And finally, a shout out to Philip and Jessica Liu, Jonathan Mulberry, Charlie Joe, and Joe Fender. Thank you so much. The watch pot never boils, and right now, all of us are watching it. <laughs> a lot of people eat very meat heavy hot pots, but I always like the vegetables the most. Maybe that comes to no surprise. <laughs> That's one thing about hot pot, is it kind of forces you to be patient and eat slowly, and a bunch of different ingredients will cook at different rates and stuff, so it's kind of fun to like pick around and see what's done. It's too bad we couldn't have a fire. It was good, like a roaring fire going. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. It's gonna be really nice to eat all this and get in the tent. <laughs> get dry and warm. What a campsite, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were struggling today and payoff is quite good. <laughs> I love that it was so snowy today, but I'm kind of hoping it's sunny tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I just settled for um dry because uh, all my stuff ended up getting a little damp. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Hot Pot is just such an entertaining meal, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like so fun to open it up and see what there is. <laughs> and you like check things and... <laughs> Napa has a great texture too, man. Yeah. We went to Mohican State Park and it was snowing like this. Oh yeah. We were trying to cook in the morning. It was almost impossible. <laughs> this is very reminiscent of it. It still is much colder, I feel like. Yeah. Oh man, that's warm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and it tastes exactly how hot pot smells. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a very nice broth after like a hot pot. We went backpacking in the Smokies. That was like our first real backpacking trip besides the one we went in Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. Brought one of these top ranges. <laughs> had like bags of rice and everything. <laughs> but how was it carrying it this time? Was it giving you horrible flashbacks to that time when we had it packs was. that were way too heavy? <laughs> yeah. But at least in this case, the, see the one we brought was ours. I think ours was a tiny bit bigger, maybe. And also it came with like this plastic case. Mm -hmm. And we kept it in the plastic case, which is mm -hmm. probably like an extra three or four pounds. Like this is the exact one that I use when I go to my dad's house. Yeah. I think you'll see a lot of these actually in Asian assholes. And like the gas canisters, you can pretty much only buy those at like Asian <laughs> stores. Yeah, which is funny. <laughs> I feel like the hot pot type meal is just like a very Asian thing. Yeah, because even with the Korean barbecue, it's a similar idea. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't have the w water, but you're cooking stuff in the middle and sharing it. Yeah. You've got raw ingredients. Korean it's, barbecue. That's actually something I've been plan wanting to do for a long time. We'd have to do it not in bear country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally bears coming in. What you guys having for dinner? <laughs> Every time I take a bite, it's like I'm rediscovering oh. heaven again. <laughs> <laughs> Trail trolls. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have it tough. And you see this guy. <laughs> Walking across a vast stretch of Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs>